Dr. D, you mentioned many times um, uh, the name collagen, uh, you know, collagen reproduction. Um, and why don't you, in, in, in layman's term, please, um, why don't you tell us what the hell that is um, and, and why it is good for us um, and, and why and when it goes down, the natural you know, body doesn't produce it anymore and that type of stuff. You know, um, collagen is a very important part of the skin. The, the skin has an epidermis, which is the superficial layer, the dermis, a deeper layer, and then you have the subcutaneous layer below that. All that is supported by a collagen matrix. It, think of it like almost like um, fibrils, like little spaghetti pieces that kind of hold everything together. Unfortunately, a woman starts to lose collagen after the age of 30, about 1% a year. And I hate to say it, but it does accelerate after menopause. So, for example, a woman in the 10 years before menopause will age a certain amount, but in the 5 years after menopause, she actually ages more because of the increased collagen loss. When we lose collagen, what happens? Our skin tends to sag. Uh, wrinkles start to develop. Those are the two basic things with collagen loss. Now, we develop dyschromias, which are the brown spots and other discolorations. That's usually a result of uh, cumulative sun damage and other environmental things. Smoking, for example, will accelerate um, collagen loss and sun damage. Okay. Now, what are some of the things a person can do, uh, maybe at home, maybe through lifestyle, uh, and maybe by going to a doctor like you, do get uh, the collagen back or at least don't decrease the, uh, the diminishing as much. Uh, what can be done? Well, sun damage, we definitely know that sun accelerates collagen loss. Not only does will sun exposure, particularly un in cancer, or prematurely aging your skin. So that's one thing. You've got to use a proper and adequate sunblock. Nothing less than an SPF 50 in the summer and at least an SPF 15 in the winter. Um, and depending on how much sun exposure. I mean, if someone who's out in the sun all day in the winter should use something stronger than a 15. So that's number one. Number two, lifestyle. Uh, obviously, not only it has all those deleterious effects on your health, on your heart, on your arteries, it definitely increases premature aging of the skin. Thirdly, good lifestyle, uh, adequate fluids. A lot of us walk in a constant state of dehydration. We need, we need to drink plenty of fluids, fresh fruit and vegetables. And the more we have fresh and the more we have fluids, the healthier we'll be. I see. And what about, you know, kind of, um, it, it looks like when you talk about uh, how um, Botox, how fillers, how uh, microdermabrasion, how all that stuff uh, seems to be generating some more collagen. It looks to me like that's the equivalent of some exercise, you know, some, some massage, some rattling the whole thing up. Um, and uh, tell me how, 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 you know, a person who exercises, a person who gets a massage, uh, a person who, um, you know, whatever, will he stimulate, are there physical stimulation, like if I punch myself in the face, am I getting stimulated? <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it, because that's what it looks to me like when you do this dermal operation and all that. It looks to me like you physically do something to the skin and it kind of like generates it. Um, you know, uh, if, if, I, if I somehow do something which, which oxygenates uh, the skin, uh, would that help? Um, and what could that be done? Well, good question. I think uh, I didn't mention about the lifestyle yet. Skin regimen. Uh, you know, our skin is the largest organ in our bodies and often the most neglected. Uh, we put caustic chem chemicals on it, often very harsh soaps uh, in the winter. We don't properly moisturize the skin. So, you know, a proper cleanser that's gentle, proper moisturizer to help maintain moisture. Then we take it beyond that with a toner um, and exfoliant. An exfoliant helps remove that dead layer on a daily basis. Uh, it can have an AHA, which is an alpha hydroxy acid. Uh, those things, uh, Retin-A retin products are very common. Uh, that's just a, um, a derivative of vitamin A. Those things 
help remove some of the surface uh, dead skin and encourages newer skin to regenerate more quickly. So that will give a more youthful complexion. Now, you mentioned other procedures. Certainly, microdermabrasion does remove that dead layer as a one visit, um, vis as a one visit treatment. And by doing that on a regular basis, then the newer skin starts to multiply more quickly and the brighter, younger looking skin will show up on the surface to definitely give a more youthful, brighter look. Mm, interesting. So, um, like getting rid of the, you know, kind of old skin. I know I was once in, um, in, in, in Taiwan where my wife happens to come from and uh, my father-in-law took me to this um, sauna place, to this whatever. And one of the things the people did that they took a towel and I think it was just hot water, I don't know, and they rubbed it. I mean, they rubbed me red like there was no tomorrow on the whole goddamn body. And, um, you know, they showed me how dirty that was, you know. I mean, I go, my God. And that was after I came out of sauna and washing and, and whatever. So, so you know, I would have said I'm clean like hell. But, I mean, they took, apparently they took dead skin out of it. Um, I just, you know, rubbing it all over the body. And yeah, I mean, it, it burned because, you know, when you rub a towel on your skin, it, it starts burning. Um, so, so would that, would, it, would that a little bit or a lot uh, generate um, and, and help to create new, new uh, uh, collagen? Not, not a lot. Um, certainly scrubbing. And, and of course, if you scrub too aggressively, then you can irritate the skin, you get redness and so forth. What the microdermabrasion is a very controlled um, removal of that dead, of that dead strand corneum. And even in microderm, we can do a mild treatment and we can do a more aggressive treatment. My, the clients that come for their first microderm are usually getting a very fairly mild treatment the first time. Those that are well seasoned will come and say, I want it really aggressive, and they put up with a little more discomfort and get a more aggressive treatment. Again, it's all depending on what you're trying to achieve. When a person has a microdermabrasion treatment, it's a very, very innocuous, uh, minimally, it's not really an invasive procedure. Uh, people get this done even in day spas. But when you're removing that dead layer, you have to be careful to protect the skin. Um, a person who gets a microderm and then goes out in the sun without sunblock will definitely burn a lot more than someone who has not had the procedure. So it's all a matter of using common sense and combining what you're getting, what you're, what treatment you're getting with always protecting the skin. I see. Okay. So the idea is get rid of as much uh, possible old skin uh, so that the new one can grow, shine, and glow. Uh, and get rid of the old skin without damaging the new skin, um, kind of like uh, at the same time. Yes. Correct. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Stuff. You're welcome.